You're listening to Dairy Voice by Dairy Business News, a podcast exclusively for the dairy industry. One of our sponsors of the Dairy Voice podcast is National DHIA. NDHIA ensures information accuracy and represents their members' interests. They are the direct voice for the dairy information industry. To find out more, go to dhia.org. If you raise calves, you know you can't prevent stress, but you can give your calves the boost they need to rise above challenging conditions. Nurture Boost is a uniquely formulated feed additive that supports calf lung health and enhances overall immunity to elevate your calves' ability to withstand stress. Boost your calves for better performance at boostyourcalves.com. Welcome to the Dairy Voice podcast from Dairy Business News. I'm Joel Hastings, and I'm delighted to be back as your guest host for this episode. And I'm very pleased today to be having a conversation with a longtime friend about an organization that's important to the dairy industry. Our guest today is Mike Opperman, who is Executive Director of National Dairy Shrine, headquartered in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. Mike, welcome back to Dairy Voice. Well, thanks so much, Joel. It's great to see you and great to talk about Dairy Shrine. Mike, 2024 is a big year for Dairy Shrine. It's celebrating its 75th anniversary. It is a big year for National Dairy Shrine. You know, on June 20th, 1949, there were a group of industry leaders who got together in in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and started the National Dairy Shrine. Um, And these were a group of uh, leaders who represented uh, various universities, but also the different purebred dairy cattle associations at the time. And the real goal was kind of led, driven by Carl Musser, who was uh, Secretary of American Guernsey Club at the time. The real goal, and I'll read what Carl said at the beginning. Uh, he said, nowhere in America has there been built anything that would approach a shrine for the purebred dairy cattle breeders. And nowhere is there a hall of fame into which we can build for posterity, constant reminders of future generations of what great cattle have left to the industry. So if you if you look at the reasons why the shrine was started, first and foremost, it was to recognize dairy cattle breeders, but then also the great cows that they created. And that's kind of been our focus over the past 75 years. You know, fast forward now to today, 75 years later, more than 20,000 people have become members of National Dairy Shrine. The organization evolved quickly to recognize young people in agriculture and provide scholarships. We've given out over a thousand scholarships in our history, totaling well over a million dollars. We've recognized hundreds and hundreds of dairy industry leaders. And uh, since 1981, we've had a a world-class museum here in Fort Atkinson. So I would hope anyway that those eight original founders would be impressed with the progress that we've made. What does life on the cutting edge mean to alfalfa grower Dan Sheps? Harb Extra has been very consistent on our test results from first crop through fourth crop. The higher quality has allowed us to feed less byproducts and feed more alfalfa haylage in our diet. And that was unable to have a higher intake with a higher quality pork. Hear more of Dan's story at harvextra.com. Well, a lot has been uh accomplished. You're exactly right. Let's start with the youth and the scholarships. I know that a very uh, accomplished group of mostly college students apply for and and many win scholarships. Their their, uh, resumes are really very impressive. I think anybody who's been involved in looking at the applications has to be impressed. And that's been a very important part of what, what Dairy Shrine has tried to do and has done. Our mission uh, is kind of a three-legged milking stool, and the by far the biggest leg of that stool is our uh, inspiring young people. The other two being recognizing dairy leaders and preserving our history. But we've we've really made a focus within the National Dairy Shrine over the past several decades to really focus on youth and make sure that you know future dairy leaders have that start to their careers and to their and quality education to help them give them all the tools that they need to be successful in their dairy business. So not to use a dairy pun, but it really is the cream of the crop. Some of the best and brightest young people in the industry 
receive uh, Dairy Shrine scholarships. Like I said, we've given out over a thousand since we've started. And uh, we just finished up giving out 38 scholarships here in 2024 to a wide variety of, of young people from all across the country. And we'll get this uh, year at our banquet, we'll give out checks to total about $45,000. So of, of all the things that National Dairy Shrine does, I think we can be most proud of uh, inspiring the the youth to to do great things. And if you look at the prominent leaders in the dairy industry today, uh, many of them got their start with Dairy Shrine scholarships. You're absolutely right. And we've had uh, good support from a number of industry organizations who helped put up scholarships in their organization's names or in memoriam of a family member or a person. So it's it's attracted support, additional support for the program. I think the one thing that impresses me is that it's not only four-year university students, but the applications have been expanded so that students who are at technical schools and, and some of the two-year schools also qualify for some of this help. Yeah, and we, we recognize early on that a four-year degree is important and, and certainly a, a stepping stone for a great career in the dairy industry. There's you know, literally thousands of young people who go through a technical school who um, have those same aspirations. So uh, we started support for those students several years ago with scholarships. And I'll also point out that this year was the first year we started a, a scholarship for uh, dairy students who are going back to either their home farm or to a farm to manage a herd. So uh, we wanted to recognize those people who are making that career choice to uh, go back to an operation and and actually manage dairy cattle. And this this year will be our first dairy production scholarship to those young people. I should say that I should mention that I want to thank Cargill for supporting that scholarship. Tell us a little bit about how Dairy Shrine is currently operated. Uh, your title is executive director. I believe you're the only, you're certainly you're the only full-time staff member. But you've got support from a board of directors that come from the industry as well as from dairy farms. Talk a little bit about the organization as it's uh, currently operated. Our board of directors is made up of 21, I would call them industry professionals. Several of those are dairy producers. We have a few who represent uh, universities and we have a few who represent uh, industry as well. And a couple of years ago, we started also incorporating students into our board. So each year we elect a student from a university to be part of our board and we'll have our third student and we'll max it out at three students on our board. But it's it's great to have that perspective on our board because obviously they're, you know, they're in school every day. They can communicate some of the challenges and opportunities that they face. And then we can uh, create programming to, to better help those individuals. Um, Beyond our board, we have several committees as well uh, perform a variety of functions, whether it's uh, planning events or um, certainly reviewing scholarships, reviewing award applications. The number of people on those committees is probably totals well over 100 different uh, people who are involved. So the Dairy Shrine uh, SWAT cuts fairly wide across the industry of people who are involved and play a role in making our organization successful. I know I was pleased a few years ago to serve a couple of terms on the board of directors. The support from the volunteer cadre is, is impressive and, and necessary, but, but also impressive. And uh, I just wish I'd been on the board when, when, when the student representatives have joined the board. I'm sure that adds a lot of spark to the discussions. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's interesting. Just the passion that they have for the industry is, is really something that struck me. And these are just tremendous individuals. And if the future of the industry is reliant on, the, on our young people as it is, I, you know, we're certainly set up for a bright future. Let's talk about a couple of the other activities that are going on this year as part of your 75th anniversary celebrations. You've had some fascinating photo contests, judging contests, if you will, some special fundraising efforts. Let's talk about some of the 75th anniversary activities that, that you've uh, conducted and are conducting this year. It's a fascinating roster of things happening, I think. We have had a lot going on this year. Really, our goal has been twofold. First of all, we want to recognize you know, the past 75 years and all the accomplishments that we've made. 
But secondly, we want to look forward and plan for our next 75 years. We have a balance of just some fun things that are going on to do that. First thing we we started with was a judging contest. A lot of people may not know, but we have photos of every champion cow going back to 1906, I think, in the Holstein breed and 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 all of the other dairy breeds. Not f- that far back, but pictures of all the champions going back a long, long time. And we thought... As Carl Musser said, you know, a a core part of starting the shrine was recognizing the great dairy cattle that have come our way. So we've started a judging contest where we were almost wrapping up, actually, a judging contest where we, again, formed a committee of helpers to identify champion cows from each decade going back to when Dairy Shrine started in the 50s. It's, It's been really interesting for two ways. First of all, you know, looking back at all the great cows in our history of each breed. Also looking at just how much advancement we've made in dairy cattle genetics from the 1950s to today. And and it's been really fun. We're just finishing up our milking shorthorn class, and then we'll have our red and white class over the next three weeks. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting. We've decided we're going to pick a supreme champion. People will be able to decide, well, Is it Snickerdoodle? Is it Shakira? Is it Veronica? Is it Apple or whoever the red and white turns out to be? I think that'll be really interesting. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of engagement online uh, for that, but it really helps to celebrate the cow over the 75 years. And of course, all the breeders that brought that together. A couple of the other things that we're doing, um, our museum this summer is the summer of Shrine. So we have special exhibits going on uh, each, each month. We're just wrapping up. We put together a fairly extensive milk bottle display. Uh, Next month is ice cream month. So we're going to feature some of the artifacts that we have there. Also, we'll do some ice cream testing. I know, Joel, being out in California, it'll be hard for you to get here. But uh, we'll have plenty of ice cream to eat in July. In August, we'll go into cheese and some. That's a, that's a pretty good incentive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But so that's that's kind of helps to represent our history. One of the other things that will happen uh, this fall is obviously World Dairy Expo. We've commissioned an artist to develop some paintings for us. And so those will be on display uh, in the Dairy Shrine Museum. We'll also have a print that people can bid on and and purchase at World Dairy Expo. And we'll have some uh, greeting cards that we'll have available as well. But that's uh, kind of an exciting endeavor that we've embarked upon this year as well. And we'll have a really special event at World Dairy Expo around our annual awards banquet. We'll have just a great reception. We'll add a little spice and flavor to our banquet. So those are some of the some of the activities to celebrate kind of the past. And the biggest part about looking forward is we've also embarked on a capital campaign. We've been blessed with the foresight of the folks who've come before me to establish a fairly significant endowment fund for National Dairy Shrine. And our goal is to be able to really augment and really build that uh, endowment fund so that we're able to do even bigger and better things for the industry going forward. So that that capital campaign is underway. It'll go through the end of next year. We certainly encourage folks to, to support that effort. And really our goal for going forward for the next 75 years is centers around our mission. First and foremost, we want to continue to inspire you. So uh, we'd like to offer more scholarships um, across a wider variety of the industry. Uh, we'd, actually, we'd like to increase the value of those scholarships. College costs increase exponentially every day. So we want to make sure that our college students have the funds to be able to thrive and have what they need. We want to expand our uh, award recognition program to highlight more people, uh, more diverse industries, folks who have an impact not only in the dairy industry, but the food industry as well. And then thirdly, we want to expand our museum, not expand our footprint, but expand the engagement opportunities in our museum. And, you know, any anytime you make any changes in a museum, it, it takes an investment. So we want to make sure that folks who are there have, have an ability to engage with uh, the displays that are there. But even somebody, you know, Joel, if you're sitting in your office in California, maybe you could go online and, and take a tour of the museum and see what's going on. So those are some of the things that this capital campaign will help fund to help propel the organization well into the future. And for folks who are passionate about any of those things, uh, they can donate at campaign75.org.
And I think we'll have that information in the write-up of this podcast as it's posted. And I know from, for at least from my t- term on the board, it's not only a, a, an invitation to consider outright cash requests, which to Dairy Shrine in most cases are uh, a deductible opportunity for the for the giver, but making plans for gifts after someone has passed or in someone's memory, gifts perhaps of stock as well as cash could be considered. So there's a variety of ways uh, that folks can participate now and in the future, even if it's not an outright cash contribution. Yeah, that's right. Um, folks can pledge to you know donate money over time. And as you said, we've had several people who have said that uh, Dairy Shrine is part of their estate planning. You know, when that time comes, they will be making significant contributions to the organization and we fully embrace and support that. But you're right, there's a number of ways. People who have donated stock, and that's been well-received and certainly valuable to our endowment fund. So there's a variety of ways that people can contribute. One of the most visible activities for Dairy Shrine every year is the annual banquet, accompanied by an annual meeting, but particularly the banquet where honorees are recognized. Who's being recognized this year and when and where the banquet will be held at at Expo? Monday of World Dairy Expo is kind of known as the uh, Dairy Shrine Day. So we start out with our board meetings in the morning. We have a student, this will be the third year where we have a student luncheon uh, on Monday for any judging teams or students who are available and on campus. And then, uh, like you said, that night, uh, we'll have our reception and banquet. And the focus of the banquet is just to honor you know, our award winners and our scholarship recipients. So we'll start by handing out scholarship checks to our scholarship recipients, and then we'll get into our awards. Uh, and the, the folks who we are honoring this year, each year we honor a guest of honor, a distinguished dairy cattle breeder, and, and a group of pioneers. So our pioneers this year, we're honoring four. First is someone you know well, Joel, is Stan Bird, who was a longtime publisher of Holstein World and Dairy Business uh, Publications, but also helped start the National Dairy Challenge, which has had just a tremendous impact on college students across the country. I was very pleased that... Uh... Some of his friends in Wisconsin helped to, to generate the application for that recognition. Uh, Stan mm-hmm. was very important in our company, and I enjoyed working with him for many years. And I think epitomizes the uh, looking forward, always thinking of new things, anticipating right. what the industry might need. And it certainly was a real pleasure in my career to, uh, to work with Stan and have him be an executive in our company. And so it was terrific to see him receiving this recognition this year. Yeah. And and as an aside, you know, I always learn things when I read applications. And I don't, I don't know how long I've known Stan, decades. I didn't know he was from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> You're maybe the only person in his Probably. life who didn't know he was from Wisconsin. Probably. So um, he was, he was uh, extremely proud of his uh, I know. Wisconsin yeah, roots. Right. He was a Holstein breeder as well. He yeah, that's right. Him. So you always learn things when you go through applications. One of the most influential, but never heard of people who are honoring this year, influential to not only human health, but the dairy industry was Alice Evans. She discovered that brucellosis in cows was passed to humans through drinking raw milk, which initiated the brucellosis testing back in the 30s and 40s and so forth, and was quite a significant issue when that first testing happened. But certainly had a a tremendous impact, not only in human health, but the dairy industry as well. Another uh, pioneer is Dr. David Faber, who has been part of Transova Genetics for about four decades and really has helped pioneer reproductive technology, including uh, certainly IVF and some of the more advanced technologies that we have today. Uh, But we're excited to honor him. And then last but not least, certainly, is Pete, Peter Vale, who is a renowned dairy cattle investor and breeder uh, across Brown Swiss, Ayrshire, and Milking Shorthorn breeds, and also uh, has been a very successful businessman in the Northeast as well. So we're happy to honor all four of those individuals. Distinguished dairy cattle breeder, if you're in the Holstein business or any part of purebred dairy cattle, you know Don Bennick in North Florida Holsteins. Don has been quite influential in not only breeding his own large herd of cattle in North Florida, 
really through ex genetic advancement and reproductive technologies, um, working with various universities to conduct research on genetics and functional traits. He and the, he and his herd and his and his research and collaboration have been, I think, instrumental in advancing uh, dairy cattle genetics in the U.S. And not only just keeping it in his herd, but engaging thousands and hun hundreds of thousands of people around the world in some of the research and technologies that have been uh, identified th through his efforts. I was delighted to see Don receive that recognition. I've known him a long time, even back when he was a, a native Western New Yorker in Chautauqua County before he moved to Florida for most of his career. He's been a guest on Dairy Voice, which was a, a great episode, at least for me anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, received lots of likes. I did visit him in his, at his dairy in Florida a couple of years ago. And in addition to the well-managed farm and the outstanding cows that he has on the farm, what really impressed me is he drove us around the farm. Whenever we would come upon some of his workers, whether it was folks mm -hmm. taking care of calves or the milking center or uh, anywhere we came across some of his crew, he would greet them by name. They would greet him, obviously happy to see him. And he would make an inquiry about their children or their schooling or some family member that, that he knew. And he obviously had wonderful rapport with his staff and they obviously uh, reciprocated. It was, it was really a, a quite inspiring to watch him travel around his dairy with the large number of employees that he has. You know, the genetics aside, I always thought that North Florida Holsteins was kind of one of the first large, large dairies. Yep. And, and I think the way that he managed people, the way that he managed that large number of cows, I think really was a blueprint for how a number of dairies, you know, manage their own large herds uh, going yep. forward. I think he was one of the first original large dairies to be able to do that and do it successfully. So And was was looked up to and it was a, a mentor for, for many other right. producers. Uh, and then our, our guest of honor this year uh, is someone who is you know, widely known, Corey Geiger. Corey was uh, editor at Hordes Dairyman Magazine for 25 years or plus. Uh, actually, my last uh, few months at Hordes Dairyman in 1995 overlapped with his start. I always like to say that I gave him a great start in the industry. Uh, I take absolutely no credit. So Corey was at Hordes for 25 years, plus was president of the Holstein Association for a number of years has just been an, uh, an outstanding advocate for the dairy industry for a number of years and held a number of leadership positions. Since left Hordes and is now with CoBank, uh, he's an award-winning author, having published two books on kind of the farming life from his uh, home county in Manitowoc. So we're excited to honor Corey as well, and uh, certainly that'll be a fun event. And we're excited to honor all of our award winners Look forward to this being a springboard for expanding our award programs uh, going forward. Again, circling back, the banquet and Dairy Shrine Day at World Dairy Expo, because of the show is a little bit earlier this year, it mm -hmm. will be Monday, September 30, I believe. Is that? Yes, that's correct. It's Monday, September 30th. Our schedule jumped. This will be the third year that we have it on Monday night. Uh, it's worked out well, and we're able to kind of highlight Dairy Shrine all through the day and culminate with our banquet. And um, we, I should also mention that we will also have a silent auction at our banquet. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have four prints, uh, original prints on that'll be available. We will have wood carvings of our Supreme Champion cow available. Last year, we had carvings of Frosty and Martha and uh, a, a carving that Anyone could purchase and, and have their own cows done. Uh, that was a great event. But we'll also have artifacts and, and memorabilia from the dairy industry that folks can bid on through our silent auction. And all of that money obviously will go to our capital campaign. And the banquet is open to everyone and everybody in the dairy industry is invited to come. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to uh, have any special status. We know that folks are welcome to, to join the group there. That's right. And I will say that this year we do anticipate it being a popular event. When tickets become available in early July, I would, in a few weeks, I would, people who want to come to the banquet get their tickets early sure. because once we hit 300, we're cutting it off. So, <laughs> so if you want to come, make sure you get your tickets early. And those tickets can be ordered through the dairyshrine.org, our Dairy Shrine website. 
one thing we haven't mentioned, uh, we maybe because both of us have been involved, we've kind of assumed, but membership is open to any dairy industry enthusiast. The price remains $50 a year for a lifetime membership. The member receives a plaque and then continues to receive communications, uh, a digital newsletter, and information about all the Dairy Shrine programs ongoing. Yeah, that's correct. And thanks for bringing that up. Um, membership really is the backbone of our organization. You know, it's we're, we're so proud that you know, more than 20,000 people have become members of Dairy Shrine since uh, 1949. As you mentioned, it's a great opportunity to stay connected with the, the not only our, our organization, but our industry and a great opportunity to network and, and just become involved, you know, um, be part of a committee, be part of uh, the board, be part of our leadership. For anyone who is passionate about the, for the dairy cow, dairy cattle breeder in the dairy industry, uh, certainly can be a member and become involved. Have we left out anything that we really ought to touch on in this 75th anniversary year? Well, since, you know, you're well-versed about the dairy shrine and been the part of the dairy industry for such a long time. I, I want to ask you a question. How do you feel just from your perspective? I'd, I'd like to get your insights on how you think the Dairy Shrine, what role it's played in the industry and the impact that it's had on the industry and what we might be able to do uh, going forward. Well, I'm pleased not only when I was involved, but as I've observed, the Dairy Shrine continues to change as the industry changes. Obviously, the price, place of the purebred cow remains important in the dairy industry, but it's not the only aspect of the dairy industry that is important. And the dairy industry is consolidated a bit. Uh, folks work together often with more than one breed, what I would call agribusiness folks in the, the feed, the pharmaceutical, the, the milk processing industry have dairy farm backgrounds. And uh, I think the board has done a good job of inviting those folks to become involved in Dairy Shrine. So I, I'm encouraged by the fact that Dairy Shrine continues to evolve along with the dairy industry. And I think that's been one of its strengths. Yeah, you know, and that's one of our primary goals is, as you mentioned, the dairy industry has changed so much. I mean, just think about where the industry was in 1949 when, you know, they established the Dairy Shrine Club across the street from the National Dairy Cattle Congress. And just how much our industry has changed since then and, and, and think about where our industry is going and how much will change over the next 25, 50, 75 years. And and our goal is to help Dairy Shrine accomplish our mission. And we, we, we always will uh, inspire youth, we'll always recognize leaders, and, and it'll become even more important to preserve history. So we're proud of the, what we've accomplished, and we're certainly looking forward to making a significant impact uh, moving forward. Well, Mike, I commend you for the job you've done in your role as executive director in, in, in recent years. It's been fun to watch the activities for this 75th anniversary. We'll look forward to hearing about and maybe participating in the <laughs> September 30, 75th anniversary banquet. Oh, that, that would be great to see you again, Joel. And thank you for those comments. i just a person who has a great board that helps guide the activities of the organization. And I'm happy to be working with such great people. Thank your predecessors in your role as uh, secretary treasurer or executive director have been some really fine folks who've made big contributions to, to Dairy Shrine. They are evident on the website. We don't need to name mm -hmm. several, but it's it's not a long list. It's It's been it's a fairly, fairly short list of folks, but they've made big contributions, each and every one of them. Yeah, and I'm certainly humbled to be in this role and understand the path that's been that was laid before me. And like I said, I, I just hope that I can help make an impact with through the organization going forward. Well, Mike Opperman, thank you again for this conversation about Dairy Shrine. For our listeners who are members, this is the year to make a special contribution. And if you're not, what a great year to join and receive your plaque in this 75th year. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and will share it with your friends and colleagues. Better yet, subscribe to Dairy Voice, the series at your favorite podcast site. This is your guest host, Joel Hastings, for Dairy Voice from Dairy Business News.